Star Revenge 1.5 Star Takeover Redone Chain of Memories 256 hours over 3 seconds is a game that was requested in a comment a couple of days ago on the grounds that this is one of the few Star Revenge games that I haven't made a video on. But what's funny about that is that when I started playing it, I realized that I actually did make a review of an earlier version of this exact game many, many years ago. For better or worse, I decided at some point that I wasn't happy with it, so I may have accidentally destroyed it in a fire. The thing with a lot of my old ROM hack videos is that I thought they were great at the time, but looking back at them now, I can't shake the feeling that they're kinda bad. I think if I looked back at a lot of ROM hacks I spoke about so long ago, I would not only have a lot more to say, but I would be better equipped to say those things, and every now and then, I've considered taking another look at some of those hacks, if for no other reason than just to give them a more up-to-date treatment. In some respects, it's not unlike patching and revising a ROM hack, really. So in that sense, revisiting this game so many years later is actually quite poetic for me. This particular ROM hack to me represents more than just itself. Because this is one of the earlier ROM hacks I can remember playing, as long as five and a half years ago, all the improvements and tweaks and fixes to this game almost feels like a mirror of my own journey with respect to reviewing ROM hacks and making videos in general. When I first reviewed this game, I was using a crappy version of Windows Movie Maker. My voice was terrible. I was recording with the microphone from Rock Band. Not a joke. I kept stretching the games to 16x9, and I was terrible at them. Jump to today, I am now using DaVinci Resolve. My voiceover has improved somewhat. I have a blue snowball mic, and I figured out how to actually play the games in the aspect ratio that they're supposed to be played in. But I'm still not good at the games. Much in the way that I brushed up the quality of my videos substantially since then, so too has the quality of this ROM hack been noticeably stepped up. And because of the poetry of that, this game is actually very special to me. So this video is not only a nostalgia trip, but also an unintentionally profound story from my perspective specifically. I think one of the coolest things about the Star Revenge series is the story. There has always been a lot of effort put into the narrative of these games, which is such a cool thing, considering that a lot of people probably won't even notice. In a Super Mario 64 mod, an actual plot is kind of a bonus, it's definitely not a default expectation. The plot of this game concerns these evil blue stars that have taken over the Mushroom Kingdom and possessed Bowser, so it's up to Mario to stop them. But then at the end, Princess Peach kisses you and her eyes turn into the Illuminati symbol and the X-Files theme starts playing. Did I mention these games are really goofy? The funny thing about Star Revenge is that even though there is an actual story, the games themselves are also very comical. There's an entire level dedicated to Ouija. The Shy Guys are all spamming Kappa in the Twitch chat. Ouija's are trying to kill you, and I'm pretty sure the moon in this level is supposed to be the Pringles guy. But at the same time, it seems like everything is tying into a greater, more mysterious narrative. Is the twist at the end just for laughs, or does it actually mean something? It is worth noting that the lore is greatly expanded upon in the other Star Revenge titles, but if I revisited every single one of those games, I'd be here all night. Maybe someday. Funnily enough, the first thing I noticed about this game was the difficulty. I feel like the version of this game that I played all those years ago was really punishing to the point of impeding upon the fun factor. Many ROM hacks, good as they may be, are guilty of letting the difficulty become the focus over the actual fun. This reworked version of the game seems a lot more restrained, at least according to my memory, although some of that may have to do with the fact that I'm slightly better at the game than I used to be. There are some occasional moments where that classic bro -dude style level design creeps its way in, and to some extent, if it was just an absolute total cakewalk, it wouldn't be the same. A couple of common themes of bro -dude's hacks, at least from what I remember, are bullet hell crap that slaps you in the face when you're trying to do something else because the game is Toho, or Tuhu, Tao How, Tao Who. Not to mention insta-kill quicksand in very inopportune places, and that stuff is still in the game, but it's there in reasonable, non-bullshit quantities. Such that I never felt a save state scum like a scummy save 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 statesman. Man. 
One thing I like is that there's no falling damage, which is a nice flourish, and also that the game gives you infinite lives so you don't get severely punished for dying too many times. And in classic Bro Dude style, you only need 6 red coins and 80 yellow coins for their respective stars, which speeds up the pacing quite a lot. In my time playing this, I don't think I actually got genuinely stuck once, at least never to the point that I felt like there was no way I was gonna get over it. The pacing was so efficient that some of the individual video files I have recorded here are up to an hour and a half long. The more manageable difficulty allows the player to appreciate all the great things about the game without getting unfathomably angry that they just vomit on the spot. And on the whole, this is a game worth appreciating. It doesn't do a lot of super new things in terms of gameplay mechanics, but it delivers on level design and audio visuals. The music selection is a greatest hits album of various video game soundtracks and a whole lot of toohoo. Although it's not a technical showcase, the game itself is very pretty. It's full of unique and vibrant color schemes that are very easy on the eyes, with a couple of exceptions. One of my favorite details is the thick orange fog that shows up in some of the levels. That's a very nice detail. The world feels very complete and dense with secret levels and areas that you might not even notice at first. The overworld exploration feels uniquely self-directed in that respect. If you see something that looks like it could be hiding something important, it's worth taking the time to check it out because it may well be holding something very important. There is a uniquely nostalgic air to this entire game for me. So many things have changed in the five and a half years since I first played it that revisiting it almost felt like jumping into a time machine. It reminded me of a somewhat simpler and more innocent time in my life and a more humble time in terms of my videos. It turns out that a lot can change in five and a half years, and no, not all those changes are good, but some of them are. And with all the improvements that have been made to this game in that time span, that's what I'm choosing to focus on. The good things. And just as this game has continued to get better, I hope that I can too. And perhaps we all can. But my bleeding heart lecture aside, the bottom line is that this is a classic ROM hack that is now more playable than ever before. It's challenging, but not so much so that it will send you into a coma. It's goofy and mysterious, and it's more levels for Super Mario 64, so who could ask for more than that? Well, there are four more videos left, so I hope somebody's asking for them. But until then, thank you so much for watching my video.